Here is a very healthy and productive exercise for the imagination. Something that you should do daily. Daily relive the day as you wish you had lived it, revising the scenes to make them conform to your ideals. For instance, suppose the day's mail brought disappointing news. Revise the letter. Mentally rewrite it and make it conform to the news you wish you had received. Or suppose you didn't get the letter you wish you had received. Write yourself the letter and imagine that you received such a letter. Let me tell you a story that took place in New York not very long ago. In my audience sat this lady who had heard me all numberless times. And I was telling the story of revision. A man not knowing the power of imagination, he goes to sleep at the end of his day, tired and exhausted, accepting as final all the events of the day. And I was trying to show that man should, at that moment, before he sleeps, he should rewrite the entire day and make it conform to the day he wished he had experienced. Here is the way a lady wisely used this law of revision. It appears that two years ago, she was ordered out of her daughter-in-law's home. For two years, there was no correspondence. She had sent her grandson at least two dozen presents in that interval, but not one was ever acknowledged. Having heard the story of revision, this is what she did. As she retired at night, she mentally constructed two letters, one she imagined coming from her grandson and the other from her daughter-in-law. In these letters, they expressed deep affection for and wondered why she had not called to see them. This she did for seven consecutive nights, holding in her imaginary hand the letter she imagined she had received, and reading these letters over and over until it aroused within her the satisfaction of having heard. Then she slept. On the eighth day, she received a letter from her daughter-in-law. On the inside, there were two letters, one from her grandson and one from the daughter-in-law. They practically duplicated the imaginary letters that this grandmother had written to herself eight days before. This art of revision can be used in any department of your life. Take the matter of health. Suppose you were ill. Bring before your mind's eye the image of a friend. Put upon that face an expression which implies that he or she sees in you that which you want the whole world to see. Just imagine he is saying to you, that he has never seen you look better, and you reply, I have never felt better. Suppose your foot was injured. Then do this. Construct mentally a drama which implies that you are walking, that you are doing all the things that you would do if the foot was normal, and do it over and over and over until it takes on the tones of reality. Whenever you do in your imagination that which you would like to do in the outer world, that you will do in the outer world. The one requisite is to arouse your attention in a way and to such intensity that you become wholly absorbed in the revised action. You will experience an expansion and refinement of the senses by this imaginative exercise and eventually achieve vision in the inner world. The abundant life promised us is ours to enjoy now but not until we have the sense of the Creator as our imagination can we experience it. Persistent imagination, centered in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, is the secret of all successful operations. This alone is the means of fulfilling the intention. Every stage of man's progress is made by the conscious, voluntary exercise of the imagination.